So we've talked about graphics cards, we've talked about CPUs, we've talked about RAM. Now to continue the build of PC series, we're going to be talking about PSUs, otherwise known as power supplies. Once again, my name is Riley, and hit that club music. So what is a power supply? A power supply is basically the food and water to your system. It's a brick that will sit inside your system, one end plugging into the wall, the other ends plugging into all the components in your computer, your motherboard, your graphics card, your hard drives, your DVD bays, and it will supply power from the wall to those components in your system. So essentially, they're not going to add, a PSU isn't going to give you any kind of performance benefit, it's not going to get you better frame rate, it's not going to help you in video editing, none of that. But what it will do is power up all those components, so that makes it very, very important. And essentially, if you don't have that power supply, your system will be a potato, and if you have a bad power supply, they will turn into french fries because it will fry everything in there. So it is very important that you're getting a good and quality PSU and I'm going to help you out with that. So keeping that in mind, we're going to be talking about determining your uses, determining your wattage, the connectors, the efficiency of that PSU, modular or not modular, quality, and where to start looking. So first we're going to be talking about determining your uses. So just like every other component in the computer, it's very important to know what you want it for. So you need to find out if you're a power user or if you're a light user. And that should help you later on down the road in this video when we're figuring out what we need. Such as right now, determining your wattage. So wattage is basically how much power that PSU can supply to all your components. So generally it'll be like 500 watts, 750 watts, 1000 watts, so on and so forth. More wattage is going to be more power. Less wattage is going to be less power. So if you're a light user, you're not going to need as much power, but if you're a power user, you're going to need more power. So here's the special thing about PSUs. You can never go overboard. If you buy a 1000 watt power supply and you only need like 200 watts, you're not going to use all those watts, but that's not going to hurt you at all. It's just going to be there for if you need it. So keep you just keep that in mind because you can never go over. So how much wattage do you need for your computer? Well, first, if you want to, you can go down to this website I have right here in the description and you can add all your components in there and it will tell you how much wattage you need. It's a great website, but I will warn you a little bit. It is a little bit advanced. So if you want, instead what you can do is find all the components that are inside your computer or all the components that you've bought already if you're just now building your computer. Go online or the user manuals and you should have how much wattage that component requires. Then you need to go to all your other components and then add all those wattages together and that should be how much wattage that your computer needs to run. Then let's say it was 460 watts, then you want to get 750 watts. Because like I said, it never hurts to go over, but if you only need 460 watts and you got a 500 watt power supply, you're not leaving yourself much room there. So if they decide that, hey, we want to use a little bit more wattage than what the user manual said, then you're going to be screwed and your computer's going to die and that's going to be a really bad day for you. So always go over. Never just go for the bare minimums. <laughs> That's very important. The only thing that can hurt is your wallet by spending a little bit more. So always go for more if you can, within reason of course. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is connectors. Connectors, what I mean by that is, like I said, one end plugs into the wall, the other end plugs into all your components. That's what I'm talking about, the end that plugs into all your components. And that's gonna be various different connectors. So like graphics cards will be six plus two pins, DVD drives and stuff will be SATA cables. So you need to make sure that whatever components you have in your computer, you need to make sure that you have connectors that fit into those. So when you're buying a PSU, you need to make sure that you have the connectors with those. 
So you can do that by looking up online what you need or you can do that by actually opening up your computer and looking at those cables. And once again, I'll have a link in the description that will have a picture of all the cables that could be on a power supply if you need to match those with the name or something like that. So be looking there for that. The next thing we're going to be talking about is efficiency of your power supply. So even though a power supply may say it's 1000 watts, it will never really give you 1000 watts. There's never going to be a 100% efficient power supply. What will happen more than likely is only about 70% of it will be used. So you'll only be getting realistically about 700 watts out of that. And that's why it's also important that you get more wattage if you can rather than going under. <clears throat> so, to make sure that you have an efficient power supply, what you can do is look at the sticker at the bottom if it's there. You'll see something that says something like 80 plus, 80 plus bronze, 80 plus silver, 80 plus gold. Obviously an 80 plus gold is going to be better than 80 plus. But what that 80 plus means, it is at least 80% efficient. 80 plus gold, that might be 90% efficient. So really it just, it gets better from there. But having the 80 plus sticker at the bottom lets you know that you have an efficient power supply. And generally it's also gonna be better quality, better made if it has that sticker at the bottom. So be looking at those stickers if at all possible, if you can. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is modular or not modular. So basically what I mean by this is a not modular PSU is gonna be your standard PSU. One end's gonna plug into the wall, the other end's gonna plug into all your other components, and that's gonna be as simple as it is. A modular PSU, one end's gonna plug into the wall, and there will be cables that will be in your packaging for your PSU that you will then plug into your PSU, and then the rest will plug in to your motherboard or whatever component you need. Basically, it's just removing the cables a not modular PSU, you can't remove those cables. So let's say there were a total of like 10 cables on a PSU and you were using five of them, those other five would still sit inside your system. Whereas a modular PSU, those five cables you can actually remove from the PSU and go keep in your closet or wherever you want. So modular is generally better just because you can remove those cables. It's gonna reduce clutter, it's gonna increase airflow inside your system, and those are some things that are important to others, but maybe it's not important to you. So it's important to remember that you don't need a modular PSU. It's not gonna get you any better wattage. It's not gonna do anything like that for you, no better performance. But what it will do is just make things a little bit nicer and cleaner, and generally they don't cost too much more, so there's no reason not to spend maybe like five or ten dollars to get a modular PSU instead. So my recommendation is to get modular if you can, but if you can't, it, it's not a big problem. It's not gonna impact you at all. It's just a personal preference. It makes things a little bit cleaner and nicer. Next we're gonna be talking about quality. And like I said earlier, quality is very important because if you don't have a quality PSU, it has the potential to ruin all your other components and that's gonna be really bad and you don't want to waste all that money that you just spent. So how you can do this is first off doing your research. Go on Google, look up what PSUs are good. If you see a PSU online that you were looking at, go up, look at the reviews, look at all that kind of stuff. Find out if it's good. If it's not, do not buy it. If there's one thing that you should not skimp on, it is the PSU because that has the potential to ruin everything else, unlike all your other components. So do your research. I will tell you the brands right now that I recommend and generally are the best. It's gonna be like Corsair, Seasonic, Antec. Those are really the best brands, and you know if you buy a PSU from them, generally it's gonna be really good. But still, regardless, do your research on whatever PSU it is you wanna get. The last thing we're gonna be talking about is where to start looking. And basically, at the end of this video, which it is, you should already know your wattage, you should know that you want a certain efficiency, hopefully you kind of know a brand idea or anything like that. Now you just need to type it into Google. So, when type it into Google and then do your research from there. That's really all I can advise you to do, otherwise there's 
there's so many PSUs, I can't recommend just one. Plus it depends on your system and your uses, so on and so forth. So hopefully now you know how to pick a PSU. If this video helped you out, leave a thumbs up. If it didn't, leave a thumbs down. And tell me how I can improve for my future videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.